All right, welcome back to High School Playbook. Chanel, still a ton of football highlights to get through this week. Not to be overlooked was a big time matchup, though, however, in Winston-Salem. That's right, John. Fresh off their game of the week victory last week, Parkland playing host to East Forsyth with the conference title completely up for grabs. Yeah, East coming in a Friday night on the heels of a one-point victory against Tabor. Opening possession of the ball game. It's Parkland who's striking early. Riley Horton looking long, and he finds A.J. Hughes, and he's into the open field, and he's off to the races. 84 yards to the house. Mustangs lead 7-0. Now, later in the first, Parkland looking to double things up. Horton's going to slip up and on the play, and Robbie Whitney is there for the stop. That's going to force a Parkland punt. Eagles taking over inside Parkland red zone. Brandon Sutton is doing his thing. He's in for six. East for sight with an avalanche of scores, winning 62 to seven. Glenn and Reynolds going head to head. Both teams coming off week seven losses. Reynolds defense swarming to the football early. Case Wright sniffing out the underneath pass. The huge hit that would lead to a Glenn punt. Still the first quarter, Reynolds back on offense. Tommy Elrod's pass is deflected and intercepted. That's Zion Williams. Zion is on the move before he's finally brought down. That sets up ensuing offensive drive for Glenn. Craig McGee takes the handoff and he's finding the end zone. Glenn with a huge 54-16 victory. The Granite Bears have been world beaters this season, hosting South Stokes first quarter. Stop me if you've seen this before. Tyler Mason takes the handoff and he's leaving everyone in the rear view mirror. 31 yards for the score. Granite Bears lead 7-0. Now still in the first, it's not deja vu. Mason takes the handoff and Mama, there goes that man. Breaked in through the tackle, still going. He's in for six. Granite Bears lead 21-0. It's a route up the mountain. Mount Airy wins 77-0 the final. It's homecoming night at Surrey Central hosting North Surrey. Just before the ceremony, we also had some football. Surrey Central on the one yard line gives it to Allen Huffman, punches it in to tie the game up at 21. Second half, the Greyhounds QB fumbles the snap and North Surrey recovers the ball, but not before losing some yards there. Three minutes left in the third, first down, North Surrey fakes out the cameraman, handoff to Jake Simmons, he fumbles, but don't worry. Julius Brintle is there to scoop and score. North Surrey takes the lead 28 to 21 and the Greyhounds close it out 35 to 30. In all my years of football, I don't think I've ever seen that before. <laughs> Some more scores to look at. Eastern Alamance with a 63-10 victory and North Forsyth with a shutout over Walkertown 23-0 there. More scores. Reedsville took down West Stokes 49 to 8 and Southwest Guilford edges out Southeast Guilford in an OT thriller 26 to 20. Now, earlier in the show, you saw our game of the week between Providence Grove and Randleman. Chris Peterson's going to return with a story that goes beyond the highlights. It's the worst day in your life, you know, when, when you get news like that. Your heart breaks. That's how Randleman head football coach Shane Timmons described the day he found out his nearly two-year-old daughter Ophelia had a brain tumor. I just think God has the ability to put your heart back together the way it's supposed to be. And um, he can give you kind of a piece that doesn't really make sense to a lot of people. Doctors at Brenner Children's Hospital in Winston-Salem removed about 75% of the tumor from Ophelia's brain. The Timmons family then traveled to Labonner Children's Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee, where doctors removed the rest of the tumor. And, you know, there's days where you're, you're terrified. <laughs> there's days that you're worried. Ophelia is still recovering from that second brain surgery and improving every day. Timmons says he and his family are so thankful for the love and support they've received from not only the Randleman community, but coaches from all over the area. We're a family of faith and um, and leaning into that, uh, the, the Randleman community, the coaching community, our church community, our families, like we have an army of people. And, you know, since we've, you know, people have kind of um, became aware of what's happening, you know, it, it's been an overwhelming wave of, of goodness and, and people taking care of us. That's community coming together. Now we've reached that portion of the program, Chanel, where we let the fans decide the upcoming action. This our time for our play of the week. Now there have been a few weeks where Cayman Chaplin has won the award. Those were your picks yeah. and you were there for those. <laughs> uh, is he bringing home the award again this week? Well, I've been his good luck charm so far, but this week we're switching things up. Check out this play, hard to beat it. Kick return here for Salisbury. It's going to go 99 yards back to the house. 
John, it was a tight race, but you know this one. Look edges it out. Look He's slipping through those tackles. Over 53% of the votes went to this one as he spun out of the tackles. Our team of the week. How about those Spartans of Mount Tabor? Tabor earning a one point victory, snapping a three game losing streak and earning their first conference win of the season. How about those Spartans? What a week for them. What a week for us. Yeah. Another one in the books. 11, 11 games this week. That'll do it for this week's edition of High School Playbook. If you missed anything, we'll have a condensed version Saturday morning. Until next Friday, have a good night.